So on this Sunday, we celebrate Pentecost Sunday. We celebrate the pouring out of the Holy Spirit in the upper room. And let me tell you, if you've noticed or not, the Holy Spirit is very special to me. I love him. I'm not trying to make it sound like I know him better than anybody else. But I know that he is my friend. I know that he loves me. And I love him. I respect him and I honor him. That's why I sing to him. That's why I worship him. And yes, I worship the Father. And yes, I worship the Son. But I also worship the Holy Spirit because they are three in one. They are all a part of each other. But they are still individual people. And guess what? The one that's here, yes, Jesus is in your heart. But the one that allows the DNA of Jesus to be in your heart is the Holy Spirit. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. It's to your advantage that I go. Because until I leave, I can only be on the outside of you. But when I leave, the Father will send the promise of the Holy Spirit. And when the promise of the Holy Spirit comes, listen, John. Listen, Mark. Listen, Matthew. Listen. Oh, you thought I was going to say, listen, Paul. Paul wasn't there. You're like, what? Paul wasn't there? No. He got saved later. Amen. Amen. But Jesus was trying to help them to understand. I can only affect you so much while I'm on the outside of you. This is the reason why Peter denied Jesus. This is the reason why the disciples went and hid. Because they were afraid that in the same way that Jesus was killed and crucified, that somebody was coming for them. They were not bold at all. They were cowards and they were afraid. But after Jesus resurrected, oh my God, if you read the first chapter of Acts, it will tell you that Jesus was with them for 40 days and 40 nights, teaching them about the kingdom of God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine sitting up with the resurrected Christ? And, and yes, I heard you preach and teach for three years, but now. So much so that what he taught them in those 40 days, they never forgot. That what he taught them in those 40 days, day and night, we still believe and we still live by it today. And he said, I have to, I have to present myself to the Father so that the Holy Spirit can be sent because that's the promise of the father he's like that is your security that's your homing device so when he cracks that sky and they blow the trumpet how are the dead in Christ going to rise that Holy Ghost GPS going to say do, 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 do. doesn't matter that your body is in ashes that Holy Spirit that was on the inside of you will grab every single one of those ashes and turn it back into a body and resurrect that body and take you to meet him in the air and then he gonna give you a new body. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. I'm not attached to anything on this earth. I'm sorry. These chairs, you can have them. The stage, the bills. Let him crack that sky. I am out of here. Do you hear me? I love y'all, but <laughs> deuces. And he understood, and he said to them, now go to Jerusalem, and don't you leave. Come on. He said, don't you leave. Chapter 1, verse 4 says, and being assembled together with them. See, this is why they, while they were together. He commanded them not to depart. He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem. But to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, after 40 days and 40 nights, and he's teaching you about the kingdom of God, and you're going to try to talk about some politics. I know he just wanted to smack them. When will you restore the kingdom to Israel? You 
worried about Israel, I'm talking about eternity. Like, come on. And he said, it is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. That ain't got nothing to do with you, woman. But you shall receive power. power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Power to do what? Power to be my witnesses. And you shall be a witness to me in Jerusalem in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Let's go down to verse 12. When they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey, and when they had entered, they went up into the upper room where they were staying, Peter, James, John, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon, the zealot, and Judas, the son of James, these all continued with one accord in prayer. Somebody say prayer. Prayer. And supplication. And my house shall be called a house of prayer. After this, we're going into a series on prayer. Okay? Because we talk about wanting revival. And we talk about wanting a move of God. And we talk about wanting to see the supernatural and to have the miracles and the signs and the wonders. But without prayer, those things don't ever manifest. I declare in the name of Jesus that Rainfire Church is a praying church. That will usher in a spirit of revival because we pray. Because we pray. So they continued in one accord with prayer and supplication and the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, with his brothers. And look at this, verse 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. In one accord in one place. See, if you're in here thinking about barbecue right now, you're not on one accord. If you think about what we're going to eat after church, you're not on one accord. <laughs> but if you're focused on what God is speaking and what God is saying that he has for you, then we're on one accord. So they were praying and they were on one accord. And you know what's really sad? Is that there was about 500 people, they say, that had gone up to the upper room with the disciples to wait on the promise and they felt like the promise took too long and they left they felt like God took too long I got to go do some groceries oh if I don't get out of here going to corral is going to be full and you tipping out of church before I mean is your stomach your God? Is your to-do list your God? Can one day be set apart for God when you're not looking at your watch? One day? Because you even go into the prayer closet and you still got your phone with you. And somebody texts you, oh God, I think you're... And then we want miracles. You gotta be kidding me. I'm just saying Y'all know I love you, but I need to make sure you get in. And not just get in. I want you to fulfill destiny. I want you to fulfill purpose. I want you to walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Because this is the thing. This is the season for you to come into a new relationship with the Holy Spirit. I don't care if you've known him since you were five years old. I don't care if you spoke in tongues for the first time when you were two and a half. I don't care if you came out your mama's room. I'm talking about a fresh infilling. A fresh infilling. Because guess what? You didn't get all there was to get the first time you spoke in tongues. You didn't get all you needed to get the third time you spoke in tongues. You didn't get all you needed to get the hundredth time you spoke in tongues. I'm here to tell you that there's more. There's more for me and there's more for you. And every day I'm saying, God, I want more. I want more. I want more. I want more. Would you just lift your hands all over this room and just, just begin to say from the bottom of your heart, God, I want that more. I want that more. And, and getting more of you doesn't mean, God, I got to shout and 
run all across the church. That might happen, but that, that's not what it means. What it means is that my spirit, yes. my spirit is opened to you. My spirit is expanded to receive more of you. My spirit is expanded to receive a greater level of your anointing and of your wisdom and of your character and of your nature and of your DNA so that I can be like you. what he has for us. We are on an eternal treasure hunt. Yes. Don't you stop looking. Right. Some of y'all like Dora and you think you're too grown and you don't want to you don't want to deal with maps and boots and boots anymore. You need to call boots. You need to call map and you got to say we got some things to find. Come on boots. Come on map. Let's go. There's some treasures to find. There's some things that I have to look for. Seek me and you will what? You find what you're looking for. But if you ain't looking for him, you ain't going to find him. If you ain't looking for the Holy Spirit, you're not going to find him. If you're not looking for a greater level, you're not going to find him. If you're not looking for a greater anointing, you're not going to find him. If you're not looking for it, you're not going to find him. Because you're not looking for it. But I'm talking to a people that are looking for God. I'm talking to a people who are seeking God. I'm talking to a people who are hungry for God. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Lift your hands right now and begin to release your prayer language to God. Forget about the person that's to your left. Forget about the person that's to your right. Begin. I need to hear a roar of prayer, a roar of worship. Come on and just release your prayer language. Release your prayer language. Release your prayer language. The Word of God says that when you pray in the Spirit, you edify yourself. When you pray in the Spirit, you build yourself up. When you pray in the Spirit, you build up your most holy I'm not hearing you this morning. I'm not hearing you this morning. I'm not hearing you this morning. Raise up a roar of intercession. Raise up a roar of prayer. I need those rivers, I need those rivers of home. 
relationship that you need to invest into. Well, maybe if I if I connect with this person, they can do this for me. And maybe if I connect with that person, then I'll get a position. Maybe if I connect with this person, then my business will go better. And maybe if I connect with that person, then this will happen and that will happen. How about you connect with the spirit of the living God and let him do some things for you that can't nobody do. Let him do some things for your ministry that can't nobody do. Let him do some things for your business that can't nobody do. That's the reason why. You breathe, 
you move, you walk in the power of the Holy Spirit that was poured out on the day of Pentecost. Mountains may try to get in your way, but they will have to become flat land in front of you because it's not by might and it's not by power, but it is by the Spirit of the Lord. When will you learn that God fights for you? When will you learn that it's not before you who can be against you? When will you learn that He loves you? Oh, how He loves you. When will you learn that He is for you? Who can be against you? When will you learn that all According to his purpose. Stand to your feet. Hey. Thank you, Father. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you're not in right standing with God, if your relationship is not in a solid place with Jesus Christ, I urge you by the prophetic anointing that is on my life right now that you would come out of your seat and come to this altar and give your life to Jesus. I want you to be filled with the Spirit. I want you to have power. I want you to have true relationship. If I'm talking to you, please come out of your seat. And our ministers will pray for you. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Is there anyone? Is there anyone? You need to go to a deeper place of relationship with the Lord Jesus. Come on, just lift your hands. Thank God for her life. 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 Hold on, Maria. Minister to her. Come on, minister to her. Minister to her. Come on, let's pray for this young man. Just lift your hands as he continually just gives his life to the Lord. Father, we bless him. Feel him. Give him your nature. Give him your character. Give him your heart, oh God. Give him your heart, God. Give him a vision for himself that lines up with your vision, Father. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else you want to be in right standing? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Is there anyone in this place that you are here for the first time? You're a first-time visitor? Thank you for being here today. If you could please give our first-time visitors a card. We get wrapped up in the spirit and we forget what we're supposed to do. Let's thank God for everyone that made their way to rain fire today. Let's thank God. My last call to call. We are about to be out of here. I really wanted to get you out of here earlier. Then now, but we all right. This is what you call South America church. This is what you call Africa church. You have been visiting Rainfire, and you feel in your heart of hearts that this is the house that God has called you to be planted in. I want you to come out of your seats as we open the doors of the church. If you feel like this is your house, Come on, just lift your hands as we bless you. It's amazing, woman of God. Come on, just bless her. Is there anyone else that wants to make a formal commitment to making rain fire their home? Come here, baby. Lift your hands. Father, I thank you. I thank you for Devon. I thank you for her life. I thank you that you're blessing her. I thank you that you're blessing her husband. God, I know that this was a big decision for her. A difficult decision for her. But Father God, bless her decision and give her strength for everything that you have happening all around her right now. Father, as she connects herself with this house, we honor you and we bless you right now. In Jesus' name. You as well, my dear. Just lift your hands. Let me pray for you. Come here. Father, I receive this beautiful woman of God into this house. As she submits herself to the anointing of this house, thank you for her life. Help us to bless them. Help us to teach them your ways, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's receive them. Let's celebrate them. Minister Gwen is going to give you a card of this place on their membership and give it back to Minister Gwen. If you could stay right there while you fill it out, make sure they have a pen. All right, we're getting ready to go. Do you know that I love you? I love you. I believe in you. I pray for you daily. And I know that God is doing something special in your life. And I feel honored to be a part of it. Amen. Thursday, 7.30, women's group, men's group, millennials. The men are at Dairy Queen. Millennials are at...
Chick-fil-A, the women are here across the street in our kids' church. Just lift your hands, get ready to go. Father, bless your people. Thank you for bringing them into your house. Thank you for meeting us here. And thank you, God, that they are a people of wisdom that as they go from this place, they don't allow anything or anyone to steal the blessing that they received in your presence this morning. No bill, no phone call, nobody's funky attitude, nothing and nobody is going to steal the seed of the word and the spirit that has been planted in you. And you are leaving here. Say, I'm leaving here. Determined to take my relationship with the Holy Spirit to another level. Amen. I speak over you long life, health, strength, and prosperity. My children, be blessed. I love you. Kiss somebody, hug someone before you go. There's bread in the back for anyone that may have uh, a friend or someone that may be a Please make sure that it all leaves. And Minister Gwen, if you and the B team.